This is what labels and distributors actually do for you. Many up and coming artists have a massive misconception about what labels and distributors actually do for artists. Let's start with the simple one. Well, first, many people think that it's the label's job to launch a new artist from square one, meaning take the music they've created and make it a massive hit in the marketplace. There are so many reasons why this is completely wrong nowadays, but it didn't always used to be this way. You have to look at how the music business has changed. It really used to be about selling, you know, the music via CD, vinyl, cassette, or back in the day, you know, any of the other ways they did. Retailers ultimately could charge 15 to $17 for a full record. So there was a lot of margin and a lot of money to go around per unit sold. Labels made money and then lots of it. But now the business is based around streaming, which is a fractions of Penny's business. It does work. Labels are making money, but it takes a long time to add up for a single artist, let alone a single song. What has happened as a result is that the music business has largely become the entertainment business, meaning the music is one piece of a whole brand that is the artist. It's made up of many financial income streams, the music being one of them, but the bigger ones often being touring, sponsorships, merchandise, and other fan engagement monetization strategies. It's just how the business is nowadays. The truth is that labels are really looking for, you know, something completely different. They're looking for a business that is already working. You have to already have an active fan base. You have to already be business savvy enough to be turning a profit on your own. You already need to be showing real consumption numbers. And that's, you know, streaming, that's nowadays TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all of those things are what labels look at. Then and only then can a label take what you've built, invest real dollars into it and scale what you've already built. Simply put, stop thinking of labels as being able to create something from nothing. Think of them as a scaling tool for something that's already working on a niche or a, a, a niche niche, however you pronounce that, <laughs> working on a niche level. This scaling happens by them investing serious marketing dollars into getting your music and content seen by massive amounts of eyeballs. And by leveraging their connections and relationships established with gatekeepers at radio, streaming playlists, and other big distribution channels. That, that, that is something they can do once you have something that's already working. So let's talk about distributors. It used to be that a distributor would, you know, deal with getting your physical products out into the marketplace in physical retail stores or through shipping them through mail order or online order. And, you know, there is a growing niche for vinyl records, but it is and still will be a niche with the main avenue being streaming for at least the foreseeable future. So nowadays, distribution is largely handled digitally. It's through digital distributors like TuneCore, DistroKid, CD Baby, AWOL, The Orchard, and a handful of others. There really isn't a right or a wrong one that you can go with in terms of which ones are actually gonna move the needle for you in the beginning stages of your, of your career. I've seen indie artists have massive success with TuneCore, with CD Baby, as well as with DistroKid. I personally would recommend, uh, you know, TuneCore and DistroKid over some of the other ones for a few reasons that aren't even important enough to digress into. <laughs> AWOL and The Orchard uh, are a little more, what I would call the pro options, but us are usually only available to more established artists and they work on a percentage basis rather than a fee, which can often be much more money out of the artist's pocket in the long run. So those are the different routes that you can go as far as digital distribution. Here's a big factor that you need to know. They're pretty much only gonna get your music onto the DSPs. Those are the digital service providers. Those are Amazon, those are Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, et cetera. That is pretty much all they're gonna do. They do not typically promote your music for playlist curation. That's not something that these platforms do. It's a big misconception. This is the job of the artist, the label, the marketing team, the manager, or whoever it is that's helping promote the release. It's a hard game to get connected to the actual playlist curators, which is why I encourage you not to focus on playlists as your only success metric. At least in the first year or two of putting out your music, focus on consistency. Focus on marketing the music on your social channels and with paid traffic like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube ads. And then 
Focus on getting the algorithmic playlists to place songs in listeners' algorithmically generated playlists like Release Radar. To do this, you have to have active social media channels with an engaged audience and probably be spending around $5 a day at minimum. That's, a, that's like a minimum on Facebook and YouTube ads, marketing your release and driving listeners to Spotify and or Apple Music. So you do need to be thinking about having a little bit to spend on the advertising side of things, especially in the very beginning. I wanted to make this vlog because it's something I've heard a ton on clubhouse rooms lately where artists think distributors are there to get your music out there and market it on a mass level. But that's just not the truth. It's not the distributor's job. And it's better if you go into your next project release with realistic expectations and control the things that you can actually control. When I did our Made It In Music podcast interview with John Marks of Spotify, who was one of their biggest country playlist curators at the time, he said that trying to get on a playlist cannot be your only marketing strategy. It cannot be your only marketing strategy. It has to be one of many. Playlisting cannot be the only strategy. At Full Circle Music Academy, we have some exciting music marketing resources for you coming down the pipeline. And if you need help marketing your music, getting it out there, just shoot me a DM and I'll let you know how our Full Circle Music Academy can help you actually get your music heard.